Oleochemicals are derived from fats and oils, which in this context are triacyl glycerides or TAGs. Here's the picture, and you can see there's a glycerol backbone, right? The three carbons, and to each of those is attached a fatty acid. They can be the same or different fatty acids or a mixture, usually, of fatty acids of varying types and chain lengths and degrees of saturation. And of course, they can be animal or vegetable in origin. So let's take a look at world consumption of fats and oils. That's a little over 250 million metric tons per year. Let's take a look at the pie chart. You'll see there that palm is very important between palm at 32% and palm kernel at 4%, that's over a third of the world's fats and oils are coming from the oil palm. And then of course you've got your old favorites like soybean and rapeseed oil and sunflower and so forth. And then round toward the top of the pie, you've got beef tallow, of course, and other animal fats. So I put together a sources and uses analysis for oils and fats, and uh, this following chart, I have to uh, warn you, may be subject to revision. This is a first draft, but um, it shows you where the stuff comes from and broadly where it goes. So let's take a look at the chart. Um, what I've added in here is UCO, used cooking oil, to take account of this, uh, this, this stuff that's used uh, primarily in fuel. So with the UCO, you've got 261 million tons coming mainly from vegetable sources, and then the, the, the animal and the UCO going into primarily food and feed, and then the chunk at the end, a little under 100 million tons, 96 million, going into so-called industrial, which I've broken down there into biodiesel and renewable diesel, and then a bunch of other areas which are traditionally known as the, uh, the oleochemical sector. And so this next chart, I'll break that down in a little bit more detail by tons. Uh, let's take a look here. We've got um, the bio and renewable diesel together, accounting for about 70 million tons out of that 96 million. And then the remaining 26 million tons is what we traditionally have thought of as the oleochemical sector. That's uh, soap, fatty alcohols, fatty acids, and the ever-present other. So what I'm going to do now in the uh, following charts is to look at what oleochemicals do, and then a brief explanation of how they do it. All right, so um, what do they do? Well, first, as we've noted, energy. They're a source of energy, particularly in the form of biodiesel and renewable diesel. They are a source of surfactancy. We love surfactants, emulsification and cleaning in particular. They're also reactive intermediates. They also provide lubrication and emolliency physical property modification, plasticization and stabilization in polymers, and they are often monomers or precursors for biopolymers. So I'm going to take each of these in turn and go into a little bit about how they do it. So as an energy source, Biodiesel is produced by transesterifying a fat or an oil with an alcohol, usually methanol, to form a fatty acid methyl ester or FAME. That's traditional biodiesel. Uh, renewable diesel, otherwise known as hydro-treated vegetable oil, HVO, is produced by hydro-treating fats and oils. And then, um, you know, both of these uh, fuels, the bio uh, diesel or the renewable diesel, act as direct replacements or blends for petroleum-based diesel. Pretty big market. A lot of product been going into that area in the last 10 years, especially. Uh, second up, surfactancy. Um, I think we are pretty familiar with oleochemicals like fatty acids and fatty acid salts going into soaps, also going into fatty alcohols, alcohol sulfates, ether sulfates, ethoxylates, APGs, many, many others. Um, surfactants used primarily in cleaning, but also a range of industrial applications, which of course I know my listeners are very familiar with. All right. Next one, reactive intermediates. Um, 
These are what we call like foundational oleochemicals, uh, the fatty acids and the fatty acids and the methyl esters, then serving as building blocks for a, a pretty wide range of downstream chemicals. Glycerin, of course, not to forget glycerin, the co-product of fat or oil splitting is also a fairly important chemical and intermediate in its own right. Lubrication and emolliency. Um, there are acids and acid derivatives used as lubricant additives. And uh, there are other oleochemicals, particularly esters used as a lubricant base stock in and of themselves. Biolubricants, it's a niche, but a significant one in the overall global lubricants market. Um, physical property modification refers primarily to the hydrogenation of unsaturated vegetable oils to produce semi-solid or solid fats, and this process modifies melting point texture, etc., etc. Pretty big area, um, margarine, shortenings, confectionery, etc. Plasticization and stabilization in polymers, so oleochemicals like epoxidized soybean oil or ESBO used in uh, as plasticizers and stabilizers, uh, particularly in polyvinyl chloride, PVC. Uh, plasticizers, of course, increase flexibility and stabilizers, as the name suggests, prevent degradation. And finally, monomers or precursors for biopolymers. You've got um, an emerging area, still pretty small, dicarboxylic acids like azelaic acid or sebacic acid, diols and polyols that are polymerized, easy for me to say, to create bioplastics or bio-based polymers such as biopolyamides and polyesters. It's a niche area, but certainly one in which a lot of research is being done today. So there's our snapshot, our very brief summary introduction to oleochemicals. If this is interesting to you, I encourage you to sign up for and attend our first Oleochemicals Business Essentials course to be held in person September the 30th in Valencia, Spain. That's the day in front of, the day directly before the ICIS World Oleochemicals Conference in Valencia. So I'm teaching the course and I've modeled it after the surfactant business essentials course, right? So we go through the whole supply chain from an economic and commercial perspective. So you're gonna spend a day with me and you're gonna learn in an incredible amount of detail the business of oleochemicals. And in that one day, that eight hour period, you're gonna get exposed to insights and experience which really you would only otherwise be able to build up up over a period of decades in this uh, industry. And so uh, that's what we pledge to do. We've been doing it, as I say, in surfactants for uh, almost 15 years now. This is the first oleochemicals course. I'm really excited about it. I'm still putting it together right now. We're being bang up to the minute in terms of brand new technology and breakthroughs uh, and innovations in this area. And as I said, you're going to get such a, an incredibly deep understanding of how the business of oleochemicals works. So I really encourage you to uh, sign up. If you're going to the conference, you, you got to come to the course, okay? And, uh, but even if you're not going to the conference, I, I, I encourage you, if you're getting into the business of oleochemicals or if you're broadening the scope of your responsibility, this is going to be a great, a great course for you. Um, Valencia is a fantastic place. I've never been there. It looks great on the web. Um, you should get out there, uh, as I said, September the 30th, right? Uh, end of the summer. Be just perfect. So I really look forward to seeing you there. And thanks again, as always, for listening.